So welcome to the fourth part of today's lecture on properties of determinants. Now, we did talk in the last lecture that a determinant measures whether a matrix is invertible or not. But the one thing we haven't talked about is, well, what does, it actually, what does the number that you get when you compute a determinant, what is it actually telling you? And in certain cases, it actually is giving you some very useful information. So here's the theorem. We'll just state the theorem and I'll give you an example. So if you have a two by two matrix and P is the parallelogram defined by the columns of P, and we'll do an example of this in a second if you can't visualize it, then the area of P is actually going to be equal to the absolute value of the determinant of A. So one way thing to take away is somehow the determinant is measuring area. And similarly, if A is a three by three matrix and V is the parallelopiped defined by the columns of A, then the volume of A, V is given by the determinant of A, taking the absolute value signs because area or volume are not allowed to be negative. And of course, this expands up into N by N, but it becomes a little hard to imagine what's happening in N dimensional space. But basically, the determinant is a measure of the volume of that object. So just to kind of be a little bit clearer about what we mean by the parallelogram defined by the columns of P, here is a matrix with columns two, one, and four, negative one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot each of these points. So two, one, I'm just gonna make a rough estimate, is somewhere over here. So there is two, one. And then I'm also going to plot the column for four and negative one. And so I did this totally not to scale, but that's okay. So there would be the vector for negative one. And you can now use these guys to define a parallelogram, right? So it's, this is the parallelogram that we're talking about. Uh, maybe I can make it a little bit more red. There we go, this is the parallelogram. And if I compute the determinant of A, I get negative two minus four, so I get negative six. So the P here is the red thing. This is P has area, the absolute value of the determinant of A, so it has area six. So that's what this number is telling you. Okay. Now, this number is also kind of useful when you're looking at linear transformations. Okay, so here we have, say, a linear transformation from R2 to R2, and because it's linear transformation is actually given by some sort of matrix. And if S is some sort of parallelogram in R2, so you're starting over here and you're looking at an object, and then you stick it into your function and you're gonna get another parallelogram on the other side, then the area of the object you get on the other side compared to the area of the object that you started with uh, are related, and in, particularly, in particular, they're related by the absolute value of the determinant of A. So the A here being the standard matrix. So again, let me give you an example of this. So we're starting with a unit square. So let me draw my unit square right here. There we go. This will be my unit square. And this is the point one, zero, and this is the point zero, one. And what we wanna do is stick every point in the red box into my function, which is given by multiplying that point by the matrix one, three, four, six, and then look at what happens on the other side. So we do some calculations. We see that the point um, one, zero gets sent to the point one, four, and the point zero one, hopefully I left myself enough room here, gets sent to the point three six. So now I can plot these guys. So one four is, nothing's gonna be to scale here. So just so you can see what's going on. Let's say that this is one four, totally not to scale. And three six would be up here, three six. And then you see that you're getting some sort of parallelogram. This is the parallelogram. So any point in the red box get mapped over to something in the green box. And we can now relate here the area. 
So the area of TS, and then I'll just put the green box, is equal to the absolute value of the determinant of A times the area of S, right? And this is the red box. And the determinant of A in this case, and the absolute value is, uh, is, also, is six in this case. And the area of this guy is one. So the area of the whole thing is uh, six. So we have this nice connection uh, between using the standard matrix that allows you to relate areas where you started with, with areas of the objects that you end up with. And even though I've only stated this for R2, there's actually similar statements hold for R3. The, you would be talking about volume of an object and the volume of the object, and then you're relating, the determinant is kind of telling you the scaling factor. And of course, if you can imagine n dimensional space, a similar types of uh, statements hold. So there was a lot of kind of nice, useful results in today's lecture. So some of the key ideas that you should take away is that we've been focusing on applications of determinants. In particular, we saw Kramer's rule, a new way to compute uh, solutions to systems of equations. We used Kramer's rule to come up with a new inverse formula. And finally, we saw a connection between determinants with area and volumes in, of geometric objects. So I. I hope you enjoyed today's lecture. There was a little bit of hammering outside today, so hopefully that didn't pick up on the microphone. And I will see you on lecture 19. Have a great day.